Philip? I'm here. Excellent. You want you ready to start? Let me get me off. There we go. Yes, I need a little bit in here. So let me introduce first. So uh, the format we're following today is we're broadcasting on Google Hangouts. Is that correct? Yes. On Google Hangouts. Hi. Hello. And so we wanted to make it um, so everyone can be part of it, and anyone that has class or something and can't come can uh, listen live. That's why I'm trying to do both. And we're also recording it. So if you know of someone who wants to hear the information, they can go on to our website at condevcenter.org forward slash big idea. And, and see exactly what we're doing right here. Um, so I'll start off with, uh, hi, glad to see you. Um, I have a little script that we want to start off with. So welcome to the Big Ideas at Berkeley Informational, which is presented by UC Berkeley's Development Impact Lab, who, in partnership with us, the office for the um, H.G. Buffett Foundation Chair on Conflict and Development at Texas A&M. Before we begin, we want to thank everyone for joining us here in person, and everyone joining us live on the internet via Google Hangouts at condocenter.org, Big Ideas. And if you have any questions, you can send them with the hashtag Big Ideas. Correct? Correct. So first of all, I'd like to invite or thank everyone here for, for coming and introduce you to Philip Denny, who's at UC Berkeley, and he's the manager of Big Ideas. Yep. We've been sort of I've been giving little teases about Big Ideas to everyone, and I thought the best way to communicate all the cool things going on about the program would be to invite the head honcho of Big Ideas. So Philip, it's all uh, you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and uh, hello everyone at Texas A&M. Nice to see you all. Um, <laughs> well, this is this is our first Google Hangout for Big Ideas, so uh, bear with me if we have any technical difficulties, because I'm sure it's going to be on me. But um, it's really exciting to have Texas A&M involved this year in Big Ideas. Um, this is a competition that's been going on on the Berkeley campus now for seven years, um, and it's really it started about seven years ago when. Somebody who worked for the chancellor at UC Berkeley had a number of students coming to him with these incredible ideas. Both graduate and undergraduate students were coming to him with ideas about how to improve the campus, how to improve the world. And um, is that a hand up in the back already? No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what they did was they got a little pool of funding and they started a white papers competition here on the Berkeley Berkeley campus that you essentially submitted an application in. January or February, and you heard back in March whether you get a little funding for your ideas. Um, so that went on for about five years on the Berkeley campus, and then two years ago it started being managed by the Blum Center for Developing Economies. And what we wanted to do at that point was to take this competition and expand it to give students the resources and guidance they need to develop their ideas. So not necessarily just giving them funding for their idea, but actually giving them the resources and some of the tools that students need to help them develop their ideas so that they can have more potential for impact. So thanks to the collaboration this year with USAID um, that um, the Conflict and Development Center is part of and the Blum Center is part of, we had this great opportunity to expand the Big Ideas competition to Texas A&M as well as seven other universities across the country. So we're really excited about the involvement this year. And we're really excited about what's going to happen with Big Ideas and the ideas that we're going to get from the other campuses. Um, those other campuses, I'll mention them quickly, are MIT, um, Duke, William & Mary, of course, Michigan State, Texas A&M, McElroy, and 
Cal, so Texas A&M as well. Um, so we're really excited, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Um, so with that, I'm going to start our general presentation, our Prezi presentation, and uh, I'm going to do a screen share here. There you go. Can you see this, the Prezi now? Yes. Great. Okay. So Big Ideas, what is Big Ideas? It's an annual innovation competition aimed at providing funding, support, and encouragement to interdisciplinary teams of graduate and undergraduate students who have big ideas aimed at solving important social challenges. So that's our very long tagline for Big Ideas. But the key things there that I want to point out is this is open to both undergraduates and graduate students from across um, the entire campus. Um, it's not an engineering-based competition. It's not a business school-based competition. What we really want to see is students come together, form multidisciplinary teams, because that's what we believe it takes to solve social challenges. You can't just come from one viewpoint. You have to come from a wide range of viewpoints and tackle that issue together. So this year in the Big Ideas category, there's actually nine categories um, that students can apply to. And you can see those categories all listed here. Creative expression for social justice, clean and sustainable energy, financial capability, global poverty alleviation, improving student life, IT for society, open data, human rights, and then scaling up big ideas. Now, the three categories that are open specifically to students in that HESN network, which would include Texas A&M, are global poverty alleviation, open data, and human rights. So to be eligible in those categories, all you have to do is be, have at least one eligible, eligible enrolled student from Texas A&M, and you can apply to any one of those three categories in red. To apply to any of the other categories, um, you would have to collaborate with another eligible student from UC Berkeley or one of the other eligible campuses. So does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. OK, great. Um, so I just wanted to point those out. But global poverty alleviation, open data, and human rights are open to Texas A&M students without any other collaborating campuses. So the, oh, before I go into that, I'm just going to introduce the video, which is a video that we put together on Big Ideas. I think it does a very good job of sort of expressing what the goals of Big Ideas are, our mission, and um, much better than I can do. So here you go. What makes an idea big? I think what makes an idea big is that it goes outside the normal boundaries. I think what makes an idea big is it's a potential for its impact in the community. It's novel, it's unique, it's challenging, it's exciting. The Big Ideas program seeds funds and encourages student innovation for a better planet. Undergraduate students are rarely recognized as producing innovative, cutting-edge ideas. You know, it doesn't take a lot of money. It doesn't take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't take a five-year PhD research project in order to do some of these things. I heard about the Big Ideas program and it was brought to our attention as a group and we thought, hey, this would be a really great opportunity to kind of uh, get some, get the word out about our projects and see if we can get some support. And it ends up being much more than a grant because it gives you that confidence to go forward. The fact that there's other people in the room and other people at Cal that are reviewing this and thinking, hey, you should go for this. Yeah, having it was like one of the best things for our project. It really got us off the ground at a point where we needed that extra inspiration. Yeah, knowing that the, the campus is supporting projects like this and that you have access to these resources has been very instrumental. Just the fact that Big Ideas existed and um, seemed willing to fund a project like this gave us hope um, because <laughs> our budget for dental is actually like under $200 a semester. And we, we, we saved the residents of Berkeley like 
probably fifty to hundred thousand dollars just to the service that we have. Capitalize on the creativity of the students. Uh, give, don't tell them the solution. Give them the opportunity and let them come up with creative ideas. We should disabuse ourselves of the idea that all smarts are with the professors. Students are just as smart. They're just younger. That's all. We created a business plan for big ideas. So it really gave us that push to really follow through on this and give up our investment banking and consulting offers that we had. And as soon as we got that, that the news that we had gotten the grant, I think that's the first time we said, hey, let's give up what we're doing and let's follow our passion. The power of the small grant is that it allows students to experiment earlier in their lives. They don't need to wait to complete a PhD and get a faculty appointment to try something new. I think that's very important. Otherwise, we, we waste a whole kind of generation just waiting for the credentials to do something they have some capacity to do earlier. What makes an idea big? I think what makes an idea big is that it goes outside normal boundaries and it really kind of surpasses what was already there and sets a precedent for something new. Okay, did everybody hear that okay? Hello? <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, Philip. We got it. Oh, we got some feedback now. Um, okay, well, I don't know if any of you have seen those mushroom kits, but they're now in Whole Foods and Petco and Nordstrom's Nationwide, and the student who you saw as part of that um, was actually one of the bachelors on The Bachelorette last year, so that's our claim to fame. But, um, but yeah, so uh, that's a really great project, but it's one of many different types of projects that has come through Big Ideas. Um, winners have done a wide range of projects um, that have come through Big Ideas. Um, for instance, they've designed equipment to turn the camera of a standard cell phone into a diagnostic quality microscope so that they can do remote disease diagnosis um, in international development settings. Um, as you saw, the suitcase clinic and other groups do uh, meaningful service opportunities here in the Berkeley community. Um, a number of projects have focused on engineering water purification systems, sort of removing arsenic from contaminated groundwater um, and other projects like that. So these are just a few of the projects that I'm, that I'm pointing out to show you the very diverse sort of range of ideas that students come up with and submit to big ideas. So the contest rules. Now this is very important. Um, in the pre-proposal round, um, these are the criteria that you have to meet in order to apply to big ideas. Um, as I mentioned earlier, at least one member of each team must be a matriculated student at an eligible university to enter the contest. Um, the global poverty, human rights, and open data categories are the ones that Texas A&M students are eligible to apply to directly. In those other six categories, you got to find a student at an eligible campus to apply to those other uh, six categories. Um, the projects have to be student initiated and student led. Um, a number of the projects early on in the history of Big Ideas were sort of extensions of faculty research. That's not what we're looking for. We really want ideas that are generated um, by the students and where the students have leadership of those projects. Faculty and external NGOs or nonprofits can serve as advisory members of the for the student teams, and that's great. But really, we want these to be student-led ideas. Um, if if your idea fits into more than one category, if it's into both um, open data and global poverty, you have to pick a category to apply to. So you can only take one application and submit it to one category. But if you have three good ideas and you want to submit to three different categories that's perfectly fine as well. Um, and then lastly, student teams cannot seek funding from Big Ideas for projects that have previously won a Big Ideas Award. That obviously doesn't apply to Texas A&M since that's the first, this is the first year that you're competing in the category. So here's the timeline that I want to hone in on for a bit. Um, right now we're in the pre-proposal stage for Big Ideas. Um, the contest launched about three weeks ago. Um, and right now what we're doing um, is we're doing information sessions like this, we're doing writing, or writing workshops like this, we're doing information sessions, 
um, and we're reaching out to students across Berkeley and those other seven campuses um, that I mentioned to you, and we're trying to get the word out as much as possible. At the same time, um, we also have advising hours, and this is something I would very much encourage everyone at Texas A&M who's going to apply to the Big Ideas competition to take advantage of. We have advising hours um, with our Big Ideas advisors, and all you need to do is email us at bigideas at berkeley.edu, let us know a few times that you're available, and we'll arrange for you to talk with an advisor. You can send a copy of your application in advance. They'll read over it. They'll give you feedback. They can talk you through which categories to apply to if you have questions about that. Anything you want to talk to a Big Ideas advisor about, I just encourage you to sort of book early um, because as we get closer to the deadline, we get tighter um, time restrictions with our advisors. Um, so come talk to us early, even if it's an idea currently rambling in your head and you just want to walk through it with somebody. Come talk to one of our advisors. Um, we'll schedule a Skype session or a Google Hangout with you and um, talk to you that way. We also are going to have some editing blitzes right before the November 5th deadline, and that's the big important date, November 5th, 2013, 5 p.m. Pacific time is the deadline. But right before that, on October 29th and on November 4th, we're going to have two editing blitzes, and we'll have a terminal set up where you can submit your proposal in advance, and then an advisor will give you sort of those last minute tips and feedback about how to improve your application and we'll have a sort of a Skype terminal set up so that on, on those dates you can participate in the editing blitz remotely as well. But again, that pre-proposal deadline, November 5th, 2013, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Now for those um, applications that move on to the final stage, um, the final stage begins in January. January 15th around, and for the next eight weeks, the finalist teams are paired with Big Ideas mentors. These are faculty or industry professionals with lots of experience either in the category that you're working on or in an area where your project specifically needs help, such as business plan development or organizational design, um, and you work for eight weeks with your Big Ideas mentor to hone your proposal into a final proposal. And then the full, full proposal stage, um, Applications are due again March 11th at 5 p.m. And then there's a few things that happen after that. Obviously, there's a judging review period and a notification of awards in mid to late April. Um, and there's a People's Choice video contest that runs in April. And anybody who applies to the pre-proposal stage, regardless of whether or not you make the final stage, is eligible to submit a two-minute video. And we'll release more details on that as we get closer to it. And then there's a grand prize pitch day and we're trying to figure out the logistics now that we're a multi-campus competition uh, about how that will work, but I imagine we can have teams who make the final round from other campuses um, participate remotely. Um, we'll get you on a Google Hangout or we'll webcast you in and uh, involve you in our grand prize pitch day that way as well. So let's talk a little bit about what the application for the pre-proposal looks like. Um, everybody's still with me, right? Yes. Okay. And if you have a question, just uh, I guess you, if, as long as you can hear me and I can hear you, you can, you can just sort of holler in too. But um, so the proposal elements for the pre-proposal. Um, the first, well, it's a five-page pre-proposal. Um, references are not included in that five-page limit. You can attach as many references as you want, letters of reference, um, recommendations, things of that nature. Um, that won't count towards the five-page limit. What we do tell judges, though, is it's up to them whether they want to read beyond five pages or not. So most judges will stop reading at five pages. Um, we require that the document is attached as a PDF when you upload it um, and all that. But um, essentially what you have is a title for your project, which is a simple, short, very brief title for your project, a project description. Um, and the project description um, should address and communicate your understanding of relevant research and statistics on the problem that you're addressing. Um, it should talk about how it works, the intended impact of your project, um, and really what you're supposed to do is focus on that project for the first year. Um, the Big Ideas awards are really intended to be a one-year award, and so we want to see what your project would look like in the first year. Beyond that, it's great to talk about your vision for how you would scale your project, but really what we're focusing on is that first year of implementation. 
If you expect to encounter sort of implementation challenges, then we want you to explain how you're going to address those challenges. We want you to plan to scale up, but that's not the emphasis of your proposal, truly, really that first year. Um, and again, judges are going to consider, above all else, how innovative and creative your project idea is. Um, so there's also that need statement. And in that need statement, what you should be talking about is if there's other existing interventions or systems or products that would compete with yours, you should talk about why yours exceeds what's currently available on the market or how yours is, you know, where the other shortcomings have come in on those other projects. But really, you should have done your landscape research and know what else is out there. And again, I'll mention it's a one-year timeline. We ask for a timeline, and there's examples on the Big Ideas website that I'll show you in a bit. But um, we want a one-year timeline for your project. And then we want to know um, who's on your team, and do you have that multidisciplinary sort of breadth of expertise that it would take to implement your project if you receive some funding. So we want to see the team bios. And on the team bios, often I'll see um, bios that are very long, and they include sort of extracurricular activities or, you know, that they're on the, the student Frisbee team, something like that. Keep it relevant to what the needs are for that specific um, proposal, you know, the business plan experience, um, design, website application design, things like that. But really cater those bios to something that's applicable to your project. And then lastly is a one-year budget, and we have a template also on the Big Ideas website, which, which I'll show you, um, that sort of goes over the budget. Uh, we want both sort of anticipated revenues and expenses in that first year. And really, again, it's just for that first year. So the emphasis on the pre-proposal round, and this is what differs drastically from the final round. In the pre-proposal round, the judges are putting a great deal of emphasis on is your proposal creative? Is it innovative? Um, that's about half of the judging rubric right there. And so that's heavily weighted by the judges. When we move to the final round, that shifts greatly to viability and impact becomes 45% for the final round because we know the pr proposals that make it to the final round already have been reviewed on creativity. Then we move it to viability and impact. But for this round, for the pre-proposal, for the five-page creativity, that's what you want to stress. We also look at does it address a pressing social issue? Is the budget realistic? And then is it viable? And has the has the application been done in a professional manner? Um, did you really you know put a lot of effort into this? That's what we're looking for there. So that sort of concludes the Prezi portion of the lecture. That's my name. Jessica Necker is our so my right hand on the Big Ideas competition. She's a PhD student in the Graduate School of Education who's been with us for three years and knows Big Ideas inside and out. That's how you can reach us to schedule Big Ideas at berkeley.edu to schedule an advising session if you want to reach out to us. And then for more details, you go to the Big Ideas website, which I just want to go over briefly with you here. Everybody still there, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Kind of feel like I'm talking to myself because I'm just looking at my screen. <laughs> Okay, so maybe some of you have already been here, but this is the Big Ideas at Berkeley website, and you can scroll through the different categories, and we had a lovely design student create the website for us uh, last year. Um, but yeah, so these are all the nine categories. Again, open data, human rights, and global poverty alleviation are the ones open directly to Texas A&M. Okay, now for the rules and eligibility requirements that I just went over, they're all under the contest button. So if you have questions or you want to go back and review, are you eligible and what are the application requirements, everything is right here. OK? So that's there. For resources, um, if you want to know more about um, the advising hours, so these are sort of drop-in advising times. And if you are going to email us to request to meet with an advisor, it would be great if you could find a time within these windows that works um, for you. If not, we can set something up outside of those windows. And then uh, just down here a little further, I mentioned the budget template. If you want to download the budget template, I'm not going to show it to you, but it's right here. And it's a pretty straightforward budget template. But if you have any questions, let, let us know. And then there's some really good examples of pre-proposals that have been submitted last year here on the website as well. So if you want to know what a good pre-proposal looks like, Click on those, you'll get the PDF, and you can review those. 
And then lastly, a lot of the questions that we get year to year are down here under the frequently asked questions. So if you have a question, you might want to look there first. And if, it can't, if you can't get your question answered in the FAQs, then give us a call or drop us an email. OK, now how to apply is probably one of the bigger questions as well. So to apply, you find out the category that you want to apply to. So say it's open data. You just click there. And then you see the big Apply Now button. I don't think it could be more straightforward. Um, but you get a description of the category. And we encourage everybody strongly to read the description of the category and tailor your, your pre-proposal application to the category description. Make sure you're answering and addressing the issues that the category description raises. And then when you're ready to apply, just click on Apply Now. And it will take you to the Pitch Burner page where you put in a username, a password, first name, last name. And from there, you're going to be asked to fill out a form that you'll have to provide the names and emails of team members. You'll have to put your department and major for all team members. We'll want your project title, a 50-word elevator pitch, and a 300-word summary of your project. And then after that, it's simply attaching your PDF um, of your proposal, your five-page pre-proposal. So those are the key aspects of the website that I wanted to point out. Um, let me just go back here and make sure I'm not leaving anything out. Um, yeah, you have about, um, you have some news of big ideas. If you want to look for at last year's winners, um, under news, you can see some of the projects right there. Right under news, you can look to see what projects won big ideas last year. So that's kind of good to get a sense of what has come through big ideas recently. Um, so from there, I'm just going to, put my face back on the screen and say hello again. Hello. hello. Um, and answer any questions you might have. Did I explain it? Do you have questions? Please let me know. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Just to clarify, to apply to one of the other six categories, can it be a student from any of the other eligible universities? Does it have to be from Berkeley? No, you can go to any of the eligible campuses. Um, so if you go to the specific category page on our website, so if you go to the open data page, you'll see what other campuses are eligible to apply. If you go to um, the, the improving student life category, um, you can just find what other, what other campuses are eligible to apply to that category and find a student at those campuses. Yes, I just, so what, what will we win? <laughs> I didn't cover that. OK. Oh. Yeah, so that's what's kind of important. Um, so the average of Big Ideas Award is $5,000. Um, last year, we had any, any, anywhere from 1,000 to, I think, the top team that won both their category and pitch day won, won $15,000. So anywhere in that range, but the average award is about $5,000. Good question. How many winners are there, or approximately? Do you know? Yeah, well. Yeah, this year, it's I, I, it's hard to say this year because um, we do have this extended collaboration with all these other campuses. But last year, I'll give you the numbers, um, we had 160 pre-proposal applications. We had 54 finalists. And of those 160 pre-proposal applications, it represented about 550 students across those teams. We had 54 make the final round. And then we had 37 win awards. Yeah, so. In the scheme of competitions um, nationally, it's a pretty good ratio. So I have a question. Does, yeah. does Berkeley, do they have, if there's students that are looking for other team members, do you have a mechanism in place for students to find um, team members? And you have suggestions if I have students asking me about um, trying to find team members, a way to do it? We don't. Um, that's the short answer. What we, we have a lot of networking opportunities that we do here on the Berkeley campus. What we've done in the past is if you have a project um, and you have a very specific need on your project, you can email us a description that we can put on our social media. And we've done that for students in the past where if you say you have this great project, give a quick one-liner of the project, talk about the sort of skill set that you need to broaden sort of your breadth of expertise on the project, then we'll help you by putting that on our social media and giving students your contact information. Okay. But that's something we are trying to work on. We have a we just hired a web development student who's going to look into how we can create sort of a Craigslist, you know, students seeking yeah. teams and teams seeking students. That's a good idea. But we won't have it this year, probably. Shaya? 
Can students from other universities be a part of Texas A&M scheme? By all means, yeah. All you need to do is have one student, um, one eligible student on your team. So if there's an eligible Texas A&M student, then you can have students from whatever other campuses you'd like. And you have resources on your website as well for um, like the writing workshop and the uh, budget workshop. That's all on the website for students to look at. And then you have the winners and interviews with the winners or a panel, winners panel. Yeah, we have. So one of the one of the events we have coming up, um, we have a we have a October seventh information session. So it'll go over a lot of the same information. But um, what we do here with our Berkeley information sessions is we do sort of one half inspiration, one half information. So we bring in um, a past winner student team. Um, in October 7th, we're going to have three past winners come in. And they'll just give an overview of sort of their experience with the competition. Then we'll launch into a similar info session like this. So that's going on October 7th. We also have a writing workshop um, coming up too, which is on our website. Um, and that will be webcast as well. Cool. Do you have any um, advice for faculty? We have some faculty in the room that I know are interested. Um, yeah, get your students involved because um, this is an incredible opportunity um, with big ideas. It's uh, Again, we want student-led projects, so not extensions of faculty research. There's other grant opportunities for that. But um, you know, encourage your students to take a risk, take the challenge on. Um, what we see is uh, the really sort of engaged, motivated students in the Big Ideas competition really do rise to the top and it's fun to work through the entire process with them. So in addition to sort of getting that $5,000 at the end, what we hear from students all the time is that just the process of going through a competition like this where you get extensive judging feedback on your project, where you get to work with a mentor, um, where you get to go through information sessions and writing workshops, all that sort of educational underpinning help students in the long term as well. So you know, there's takeaways for students that win big ideas, but there's also takeaways for students that don't. Great. Yeah, I wonder if you could just elaborate on the open data category a little bit, and what, the, what the past activities have been and maybe what the intent behind it is. Great question. Um, I can't answer the second part of that because this is the first year that we've had the open data category. So as part of uh, the collaboration that we have with USAID, William and Mary has a center called Aid Data, which focuses on how you can use data sets and analyze data sets to improve foreign assistance. Um, so in collaboration with Aid Data at William and Mary, we came up with the open data category. And we broadened the scope of it so that you can look at um, data sets from a wide range of areas, um, transportation, environmental uses, um, foreign assistance. But basically what it is is asking students to take a publicly available data set um, and boil that down to some usable resource that can improve society in some way. But I don't have examples of past winners because this is the first year we tried it. And just for everyone in the room, we've invited Michael Finley from University of Texas, who's part of the William and Mary Aid Data. He's coming in tomorrow. And oh, he's, terrific. Giving, he's giving a seminar at the Bush School on um, on open data, basically using uh, geocoded data um, for tracking terrorism. So I don't know if you've received that email, but if you want an idea of how open data are being used by aid data, that's one way to, to see that. And there's the lecture. Exactly. Twelve twenty. Yeah, that, that it's the lectures at twelve twenty at Bush School. Yeah, and you can find more information about that lecture at on our website at condefcenter.org forward slash lecture series. Okay. I mean, we have had projects that sort of touched upon, um, would have been eligible for open data had the category existed in the past. We had a project last year called Politify, um, and what it looked at was sort of all the, all the legislation that's gone through Congress and how that would impact individuals sort of in their wallets. Um, and this is a project that now has launched, and uh, it's, it's on, their, on the web. It's called Politify.com if you want to look it up. Um, so that would have been something that could have been eligible for open data had we had the category last year, but instead it was in the IT for Society category. Cool. Yes. Yeah, Ed Rice. Um, could you talk a little bit about competitiveness among students who have big ideas? That is, uh, do you observe that there's sometimes some apprehension about sharing the idea for fear somebody else may use their idea? Or to what extent do you encourage students to really talk widely about their idea in order to make it better? 
Good question. Um, yeah, we for we have the ability when you submit your pre-proposal that if you feel there's some sort of proprietary information on there, you can request that your your full proposal be kept confidential. Um, when you fill in that application web form, though, you do have to put in um, a 50-word elevator pitch and a 300-word summary that we can use publicly. But if there's proprietary confidential information, if you don't want somebody taking your idea, um, just check the box that says keep confidential when you submit your application and we won't share your full proposal. Um, but that said, I definitely encourage students who are going through this process to get as many eyes on their proposal as possible from as many different viewpoints as possible. So if you have, you know, a web application that focuses on public health, make sure you, it's getting reviewed by folks in public health, by economists, by, you know, somebody in the civil or mechanical engineering or electrical engineering computer science departments. Just make sure you're getting as many sets of eyes on your project as possible before you submit it because you'll think through things you haven't thought of before. And um, again, we have our Big Ideas advisors who have seen many proposals and they're ready to lay a set of eyes on your proposal whenever you need. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Another question. How many of the student winners, do, do all of the student winners end up uh, implementing their idea or most of them? How does that you're asking, you're asking all the questions that I forget to mention, so thank you. Um, so big ideas, this is something important. Um, big ideas, it's not a grant. It's an award for the development of the idea. So you develop the idea, you get the funding. Um, so that's important to know. But again, what we see um, is that students, after going through a year-long process of developing their applications, the ones that rise to the top are the ones who are engaged, are committed, want to move forward with their project. We had 27 of our 28 winners from 2012 are still working on their projects currently. We just surveyed them about a month ago. So they're still working on their project, even though implementation is not a mandate for funding. Um, so, you know, they do carry on their projects, 27 of 28 from a year ago. Um, and uh, it's great to see. We, we're, we have a lot of uh, information on our website, um, information from past winners as well. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you so much for this, Philip. This has been super helpful. And uh, I know we have a lot of people excited about entering the contest and judges and mentors from faculty to, to help out with the project, too. So thank you so much for your time and and um, Google Hangouting with us. <laughs> hey, it was my first, and it worked. No glitches. I'm, I'm really surprised and impressed. Thank you all for coming. And uh, if you have any questions, one more time, I'll plug the website, bigideas.berkeley.edu, and our advising hours are open, so please contact us with any questions you have. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good luck. Thanks. Well, and just for you all, I have a little list here that I'm trying to keep track of everyone that's interested. If everyone doesn't uh, will mind signing it and just letting me know um, where you're from. I don't know if you've signed it yet. But I know some people contacted me about looking for other partners. Like they 